want to I want to start this though tonight um, to to start this series on seed time and harvest and really it coincides with what I'm teaching and preaching on Sunday morning it's all everybody say it's money some of you have a hard time even saying that word amen in church anyway no God is into finances I said, God is into finances. God wants to bless your pockets. Amen. So I'm, I'm preaching it Sunday morning, and I'm teaching it here on Wednesday. So let's get into this uh, seed time and harvest. Go with me to Genesis chapter 8. Genesis chapter 8. Hallelujah. Say amen if you have it. All right. Genesis chapter 8, and pick up with me, if you will, at verse, uh, it looks like 16. I refuse to get glasses. I used to wear them, and I said, I ain't wearing these no more, in Jesus' name. All right, verse 16 of chapter 8. Come out of the ark, you and your wife, and your sons and their wives, and bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, all the creatures that move along the ground, so that they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number upon it. So Noah came out, together with his sons and his wife and his sons' wives, all the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds, everything that moves on the earth, came out of the ark one kind after the other. And then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of man, even though every inclination of his heart is evil from childhood. Isn't it amazing the way God knows us and gives us grace anyway? Yes. And never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. Verse 22, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. God, we thank you for your word tonight. Allow us to glean from it. Allow it to touch our lives and to minister to us by your spirit in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. And amen. Okay, look at verse 22 with me. Noah is speaking these things as it were as the voice of God because he's the oracle here uh, by which God communicates. Uh, Noah writes it down uh, in, 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 a, in a sense where Moses eventually will take it all, conscribe it, uh, trans transcribe it, and uh, compile it into what we call the Pentateuch or the first five books of the Bible. All right. So God says, verse 22, as long as the earth endures, or literally from this time on, that phrase as long as, from this time on, as long as the earth lasts, he says, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. Everybody say seed time. Now, the word seed time is interesting there in the Hebrew because what it literally means is the planting of various kinds of seed, not just one. You're not saying just plant oranges or just plant apples or just plant uh, 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 asparagus or broccoli uh, or onions. No, he's talking about the, 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 the proliferation um, and the variety of seed to be sown. So he's saying, sow this and sow that and sow this and sow that and sow, sow beans and, and, and peas and corn and, you know, all of these different things that can be sown into the ground, whether the vegetables or fruit or, or whatever they are, even flowers to produce. So he said seed time, time to sow seed of various kinds. Seed time and then what? He said and harvest or and reaping. So you have seed time, you have sowing, and you have reaping. Now, I want to center in on this for the next few minutes, and we're just going to hit it as an introductory, and then two weeks from now, we'll finish it and, and get deeper into it. Let's, let's start with the understanding of this uh, in Genesis 8 and 22. Everybody say seed time and harvest. 
What you need to understand, first of all, is that times and seasons were created by God. God created the times. He created the seasons. So God creates then seed time, a season of sowing, and harvest, or a season of reaping. Say, sow, sow. reap. Sow, sow, reap. Seed time and harvest. All right. So times and seasons then have been created by God. They were created by God in the beginning. And God says here, he says that what I've created, even the seasons that I've created, hmm, even the seasons I've created will not and they will never cease until the end of the age. So there is a principle here that tells us that when we do what God tells us to do, God has to honor it. Because God says, I'm giving you this season, I'm giving you this understanding, I'm giving you this mandate, and if you'll do this, then I will make sure, watch this, that what I tell you to do will bear fruit. It'll have results. God said, you sow seed, watch this, and I'll make sure that there's a harvest for your seed. You sow it, I'll make sure it harvests. I put something in the earth to make sure that if you sow a seed, there's nutrients, there's nutrition, there's minerals, there's all the things that are necessary, the process of the seed becoming a, a fruit, bearing fruit and causing harvest. I put all that in there. That's already worked out. You don't even have to do that. You don't have to figure that out. You don't have to manufacture that. You don't have to create that in your mind. You don't even have to, have to know how it works. All you have to do is obey the fact that I told you to sow seed. And if you'll do that, then I guarantee you that there will always be a harvest until the very end of the age. He says it cannot, what? Cease. He says it'll never cease. He said it'll never what? It'll never come to an end. So as long as you and I sow seed of any kind, and that can be good seed, bad seed. It can be natural seed, supernatural seed. It can be a tangible seed, whatever it is. God says, as long as you do that, I guarantee you that whatever you sow will be reaped by you. It won't be reaped by somebody else. It'll be reaped by you. Because why? Because you sowed it. So God gives us this, this instructive mandate here, and it gives us some encouragement to, encouragement to believe for some things. Now, God's saying this. He says, the earth will remain with its regular cycles until the new heaven and the new earth come. There's a newer heaven come. New heaven coming, excuse me. There's a new heaven coming. There's a new earth coming. How many of you know that we're going to live in a new heaven and a new earth someday? Amen. But until that happens, the regular occurrence of seasons and transitions and things that we know are, are, are part of this existence, until that happens, those things will never cease and they will continue to be. They're regular cycles. Everybody say regular cycles. In other words, God says this is a sowing, sowing season, this is a reaping season. This is a sowing season, this is a reaping season. This is a sowing season, and then it takes time to make sure that that thing goes ahead and produces the way it's supposed to once you've sown that seed. And then when it matures, what? It's going to bring a harvest and we reap it. So God says, don't worry about the, the harvest, you just worry about sowing. See, we get our eyes on a harvest and God says, have you sowed seed yet? Can I just tell you something right now? You cannot have a harvest if you don't sow seed. You can go speak to the ground all day. In the name of Jesus, I command a fruit tree to come out. Oranges be, be, be produced right now. Hey, listen, if you never sowed a seed in, of oranges in there, you ain't getting no tree. I don't care. You can have all the faith you want. Are you hearing me? No, that's, that's presumption. That's supposition. That's not faith. That's supposition. That's presumption. I don't have to sow the seed. I'm just going to speak it. That's nonsense. Are you hearing me tonight? There is an action that you and I have to take. You and I must sow seed in order to gain and to reap a harvest. Can you say amen to that? Amen. All right. Now, let's deal with this a little bit. Let's unpack it. Because the flood that occurred, 
This is the story of Noah, Noah now coming out of the ark with his family. They were the only ones saved. They were the only ones who, who, were, uh, who survived the flood. Why? Because they were in the ark. And so they come out. And what they find is, is that there have been all these global alterations to the earth. Because the, the flood tore everything up. It covered, uh, the, the, it rained for 40 days. And I, this was my trivia question on Facebook the other day. You know, I post one every day. And I said, I said how many days uh, was the, what, what, did the waters flood the earth? And everybody said 40 days and 40 nights. No, 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 no. That's how many days it rained. And then it flooded the earth for 150 days. So that flood devastated everything. So there were great, uh, many alterations that resulted from the, the global flood. And so God then has to reestablish through Noah and with Noah, God has to reestablish the promise of divine blessing that launched, that initiated the recreation of the world through Noah. So God not only produces a new race of people, a new humanity, a new human race through Noah, but he also produces a new world. He also produces a new environment. He also produces a new atmosphere, if you will, both tangible and intangible, both visible and, in, and invisible. And so we, we have this, this, this word then, this, it's really a poem, but it's, it's a word from God. You have, you have to hear the heart of God in this. He says, as long as the earth endures, seed, time, and harvest will never cease. Now, the words of that verse are powerful because each of the phrases that are in there, if you read the whole thing, and we have, but each of those phrases ensure that God will preserve the earth until the final judgment. What does that mean? That means that the earthly order will not and cannot end prematurely. No one can come in and, and upset anything to the extent where it, 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 it causes the seasons and the natural order of what God instituted and established to cause those things to be no more. God says, I put those things in motion, and there's no power that can ever alter them or change them. Once I do it, it's done. So you and I have an assurance there. There's a guarantee there. God says, I made it happen a certain way, and it can never be changed. And the earthly order will not end prematurely. Now, I've heard this verse probably all my life in church and you know you go to conferences and people preach on this and teach on this and it's great because people need understanding uh, regarding this subject but the verse is so well known you know as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat etc 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 will never cease all right it's so well known however that it can you can easily miss the point of the verse you can miss its point well what's the point the point is this, that, that, that being, the point is that God's word is sure here, and he's saying, I'm telling you that I will continue, watch this, to give earth its harvests as long as seed is sown. That's the whole point of this thing. I will continue to make sure that a harvest occurs as long as you sow the seed. Notice that God didn't say that he was going to sow seed. So the sowing of seed depends on who? Hello, somebody. Raise your hand and say, me. Yeah, it depends on you and it depends on me. So God's sitting around waiting for you and I to go ahead and sow seed. Some people go ahead and, you know, some people walk around asking for a blessing, expecting a blessing, expecting to reap a harvest in their lives of various kinds because he told us to sow various kinds of seed. And so people are going, oh, well, I, you know, I just expect to be blessed. I expect to receive. I expect to have. I expect to uh, 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 gain, et cetera, et cetera. And God said, well, how can you do that if you don't sow seed? I cannot give you a harvest if you do not sow seed. Does that make sense to anybody besides me tonight? Huh? Are you in the room? 
God says, no, 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 I will make sure you get a harvest. I will, a matter of fact, I guarantee you get a harvest. Why? Because everything I set in motion is axiomatic. Everything I set in motion must happen. There's no misgiving with what I say or what I do. And I'm not a man that I should lie, nor am I the son of man that I should change my mind. If I say I'm going to do this, then I'm going to do this. But I also set in motion a prescription and, a, and an order of, of operation for you and I to work together. God wants to work with us. God wants to go into partnership with us in the earth. And God wants us to sow seed for what purpose? So that we can get a harvest. So we sow the seed and God gives the harvest. Now, let's look at this for a minute because there's, there's a principle here that, I, that, that we want to grab a hold of. Because the new creation comes out. All right. Everything's getting reestablished. Everything's getting made new. Noah comes out, his family, uh, his sons and their wives. And, and you've got the animals that were saved in the ark. So they all come out together. Here's this new breed of humanity and, and not only humanity, but animals and, and, and all of the, 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 uh, the, the, what we find in the Bible that God created birds and animals and all those things. Okay. So they all come out together. And they're looking at this brave new world. Man, doesn't look like it was. I don't met, where, where's the, where was the gas station that was down there? The 7-Eleven used to be down there. It's gone. So everything has the, has the, watch this, everything has the potential for new growth. Everything has the potential for new enterprise. Everything has the potential for a new manifestation of the witness and the wisdom and the brilliance of God. God says, I can do new things all the time. Behold, I do a new thing. Shall you not see it? Isaiah says. So God says, look, I'm setting things up so I can do a new thing here in the earth. But there's going to be something that must take place before I do the new thing with and in and through Noah and his family. How many of you know that God does everything based on a factor that, de that, is de that determines what he does because he told us to do something? If you will, I will. We talked about it Sunday. We're going to hit it again Sunday morning. If you will, I will. So what happens here? Let's, let's look. The first event that occurs in this new creation, Noah and family come out. They're looking around. God's there. They're waiting to see what's going to happen now. They got no clue what to do. You ever been, you know, like, you ever been in a situation where you got no clue? You're, it's, it, come on, it's just totally foreign to you? Never been there before, never saw that, never experienced it. It's like, what is it? Nothing, listen to me, nothing was as it was when they came out of the ark. Nothing was familiar. Nothing was common. Nothing was comfortable. It was all brand new. And they're looking around, where are we going to live? What are we going to do? The house is gone. Everybody's gone. Can't go back into that ark. I've been in there for too long. I'm not going back in there. What, what are we going to do? They're, they're, they're faced with opportunity. Hmm. What is the first thing that Noah does then when he comes out of the ark? Well, look at verse 20. The Bible says, then Noah built an altar to the Lord, taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds. He sacrificed burnt offerings on it. So the first event that happens that occurs in this new creation is an act of worship. Listen to me. If your worship is not sacrificial, it is not worship. We, we, we've gotten too casual about getting to church on Sunday morning and doing, you know, 22 and a half minutes of uh, hallelujah. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, wow. Awesome worship. No, 
Worship is when you do something sacrificial. That's true worship. Are you hearing me tonight? The first thing that Noah does is he establishes an act of worship. And it's sacrificial. And so it is then that once he does that, look at what happens. First of all, God is given his rightful place. Because what he's saying with that sacrifice is, look, you made these animals, you made everything, you preserved us, you watched over us, you cared for us, everything else is wiped out, but we're still here, the animals are still here, you, you, you protected us, you gave us provision in the ark, and so now I'm taking the provision and I'm sacrificing it unto you to acknowledge the fact that you and you alone are God. And it is that first act of worship that initiates everything. Everything in your life will Everything in your life will always begin with an act of worship. Every blessing in your life will always begin with your act of worship. It'll be some sacrificial thing that you decide to do by the Spirit of God. Or it may be something that God will speak to you and say, I want you to do this for me. I want you to be obedient. I want you to, to operate in, in this act of faith. I want you to be bold. I want you to stretch out. I want you to do some. I, I'm calling you to do that. And listen, it's an act of worship, and God will be honored in it. And everything that God decides to do and determines to do and purposes to do in your life will begin with an act of sacrificial worship. He worships God with his sacrifice, and then what? God has given his, his rightful place, not only in, watch this, oh, this is good, not only in Noah's life, but in Noah's family. They see the worship. Make sure that you set an example for people to see. And then, not only that, what? But the earth is affected by his act of worship. Everything is impacted by this one act of worship. Then secondly, look at verse 21. It says, and the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, never again will I curse the ground because of man, etc., etc." And when it says that the Lord uh, smelled, it means that he enjoyed the fragrance. He enjoyed the fragrance of this pleasing aroma. And, and, and the, the phrase pleasing aroma in Hebrew means this, the, the, the smell or the scent of incense. That, that, that animal sacrifice, you ever smell an animal being burned? It don't smell good. But it was like incense in God's nostrils. Why? Because it was sacrificial. It was sacrificial worship. And so God was smelling the pleasing aroma. And when Noah did that, what was he doing? What was that act of worship? He was sowing seed. Those animals were a seed he was sowing. That act of work, that building of the altar was a seed he was sowing. That burning of those animals was a seed that he was sowing. And in response to Noah's seed of devotion to God, God resolved to remain with and to sustain Noah and his family. He said, you did that, I'm going to sustain you. You sacrificed, I'm going to bless you. You sowed a seed of sacrificial worship, and I'm going to sustain you, I'm going to bless you, I'm going to protect you, I'm going to remain with you, and watch what I do. I'm going to show you my grace. And so God does this. He sustains Noah and his family as an act of grace, watch this, that springs forth from the source of Noah's worship. Everything starts with Noah's seed. Then God makes the statement, after it's all done, after Noah sows the seed, after the sacrifice is made, after the worship is completed, after God is put in his rightful place, after God enjoys it and smells that fragrant aroma, then God opens his mouth and decrees, as long as earth endures, seed, time, and harvest will never cease. God reaffirmed that the rhythm of the seasons of seed time and harvest would continue 
as long as the earth endured. So there's a guarantee then in this verse that gives us hope. You and I can read that verse and go, well, okay, as long as the earth endures, seed see time and harvest, cold and heat, summer, winter's day, and never see. No, that's, that's good. No, listen to me. That, that's an encouraging word. That's a word of hope. Because that, that tells me something. That tells me there's a guarantee from God. And that guarantee gives me hope and it gives me courage. When you and I face an unknown future, you better hear me tonight. When you and I face an unknown future, how many of you know you don't know the future? How many of you know you look at the future and you don't, I don't know how we're going to do this. I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know how I'm going to make this thing work. I don't, I don't have the resources for this. I don't have the resources for that. I don't have the right connections yet. I don't know. I, I got this to deal with. I know that's coming up and I don't know how I'm going to get there from here. It's an unknown future. But listen to me. As long as this word comes to pass, as long as this word, this affirming word, as long as we grab a hold of it, then there's a guarantee in this verse. It'll give you hope and it'll give me hope and it'll encourage you and it'll encourage me that we can face an unknown future. Why? Because God said, as long as there's seed time, huh, I guarantee you a harvest. You can't get any better guarantee than God. He's better than the bank. He's better than the White House. Hello, somebody. He's better than your mama. God says, as long as you sow seed, I promise you, I guarantee you, there will be a harvest. Without this guarantee, you and I could never, ever be sure of having the necessities of life. We'd be like, I don't know, you know, will my job last? Will this last? Will, I, will they fire me? Will I get a raise? Will I, no, I, they're going to, you know, limit my, my bonus this year. I don't, you know, what, what's going to happen to the economy? I, I don't know. What's, all this stuff is in an uproar. Everything is in upheaval. I don't know. You know, the, 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 the Dow is down and, the, the, you know, the bear and the, the bull and all that economic financials. I don't know. Listen to me. You don't need to understand any of that. And I'm not saying not to because it's probably good that you do. But the, the issue is this. You have one guarantee and one responsibility. So seed, God says, I'll, I'll make sure you get a harvest. You don't have to worry about anything. You just keep sowing that seed. So God invites us to live, listen to me, based on his schedule. He's, I'm inviting you to live on my terms on my timetable, on my timeline, on what I've established, on the principle that if you will sow, I will make sure that you reap. Amen. So he gives us invitations to do this, and we can do this knowing and trusting in him to care for us. So God's schedule and his covenant of seed time and harvest is especially meaning to us. Why? Because it guarantees us his provision. And not only does it guarantee us his provision, but it also guarantees the fact that we will never cease to be without it. Man, that's a good deal. That's a good deal. God said, you keep doing what I tell you to do, and I'll do what I said I'm going to do. You keep sowing seed, you keep so. Well, see, well, Pastor, you know, I'm, well, am I supposed to go out and buy some tomato seeds and, you know, plant them outside in the lawn out here? No, 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 that's not our economy. That's not our, ag this is not, we don't live in an ag agricultural society. We live in green, baby. <laughs> hello. I said, hello. I said, hello. I said, hello, what's in your pocket? You don't go to the PG&E and pay your bill with tomato seeds. You don't go to Safeway and buy your groceries with bananas. Here, I got some bananas for you. Plant those. No. What does it take? Thank you. Say money. No, you got to get attitude. You got to say money. Yeah. M-O-N-E-Y. Money. That's how you live. 
That's how I live. God says, trust me with your money. So I'm encouraging you tonight as we really, I'm, we're going to get a hold of this thing because we're going to do this all month. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I said, we're going to do this all month. Yes. Oh, Lord. Amen. Why? Because I'm trying to, 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 to manipulate you into giving. No, I'm trying to encourage you to see the reality of what God said about you sowing seed in the kingdom. God's promise to continue the normal cycle of the season of harvest is based on the season of seed time. You sow the seed, and God will give you the harvest. We've just started in this thing. We'll pick it up in two weeks. Stand to your feet. God, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you that you are very clear in your instruction. Thank you that you have a purpose in everything you do, and that you have a purpose in everything you say. Your word has come to us tonight, and if we will apply it, it will heal us in our finances, heal us in our economic situation, heal us, cause us not to have to worry about money, not to have to worry about the future, because as long as we do what you tell us to do, then you will do what you said you would do. And for that, we give you praise. Now, bless your people tonight, we pray, in the name of Jesus, and everybody said amen, and amen.